Hello, my name is Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Crafty on Portainer. So a little bit about this series, I'm going over home labs, and it's all things, getting things set up, everything like that. So if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So. Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what I'll be installing today, Crafty4. Crafty4 is the next iteration of our Minecraft server wrapper, controller, launcher, boasting a clean new look built from the ground up. So this is what I'll be installing today. So now I'm gonna start on Big Bear Video Assets. And there will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. I'm going to go over to search and type crafty. And then how to install crafty for on Portainer right here. I'm going to go to it. Then I'm going to go in the dark compose. So version two of dark compose file formats being used. I'm going to set some services. And then the first service underneath the services is called Big Bear Crafty. Then the container name is going to be called Big Bear Crafty. And this is so Docker doesn't have generated a random name. The image is coming off of the registry of GitLab. So this is the registry, and then this is the Docker image, and then this is the Docker image tag. So the container restart policy is unless stop. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then environment variables, the a time zone right here, I would set this to your own ta a time zone. And then part mapping on the left side is the host and on the right side is the container. So um, 8443 is on the host and 8443 is on the container. So if this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it. And then sa same go goes with these three right here. And then now network mode, Big Bear Crafty Network. The, that's a network that's defined down here. It's a bridge network. And then volumes, oh, we have uh, a volumes defined down here. So backups, logs, servers, config, and import. And um, on the left side is the host, and on the right side is the container. Do not change the container path. And same goes with the ports up here. So um, th the volumes are defined down here, and they're local volumes. So I'm going to go up here to copy raw file. I'm going to click it. Then I'm going to go over to my portainer and get this installed. So I'm going to start on my portainer and I'm going to go to local stacks and then add stack up here. Then I'm going to put a stack name of crafty stack. And then now, um, so portainer stacks are just using Docker and pose underneath. Um, so I'm going to go to the web editor down here. I'm going to paste in what I explained over in Big Bear Video Assets. And um, this right here. Um, right here is going to be a range, so it's going to create uh, the, uh, 25,500 to 25,600, a port range. So um, now that should be good. I'm going to go ahead and deploy the stack. So now we've got it successfully deployed, and it's good to go. So I'm going to start on Portainer's UI, and I'm going to go in the stack. And then, and now you see stack details up here, like stop this stack, delete the stack, create template from the stack, stack duplication slash migration, the containers in the stack, access control. Now, if you go over here to editor, you can edit the Docker and pose, and then you can update the stack. Now, you can repull the image and redeploy if you check mark this. Um, that means that it repulls the fresh image off the registry, and if the developer pushes to the same tag, then it'll get the uh, different code off that uh, that push. So um, now if you go in the container, you'll see actions up here. So start, stop, kill, restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate. So I said it. You can see the container status down here and the logs. This is great for debugging. And uh, inspect, stats, console, attach, and then access control, and then create image, and then the image and then all the ports that are created and then the command entry point the environment variables and the labels 
and the restart policy. If you want to change the restart policy, I would do that on the Docker and Pose and update the stack. And then now the volumes and the network. So that's a little bit about Portainer's UI. So now you need to SSH into your uh, Portainer um, a server. So I'm going to go ahead and CD into var lib docker volumes. And then now ls. So now you're going to see crafty stack uh, big bear a crafty config right here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to CD into it. Then ls again and then underscore data. And then ls again. And then now you'll see default creds right here. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to cut it out. And then now you see the username is admin and then the password is this. So I'm going to copy this password right here. So now you have the password to log into the UI. So now we're going to go to the UI. So HTTPS and then the Portainer's IP address and then 8443. I'm going to go to it. It has a tell sign certificate. So I'm going to advanced and then proceed. And then now I'm going to go to the username and type admin in. And then I'm going to paste the password that I got in the last segment. And then now I'm going to log in. So now we successfully logged in. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now on the Crafty dashboard, you'll see the host, the CPU usage and memory usage, the storage of the servers and players. And then you'll see your servers down here. You can create a new server right here. And you can also go up to notifications and see the notification center. The cogs right here, the panel configuration, users and roles, and then the config.json right here. And then um, you can customize crafty. And then you can go over here to the dashboard, get back to it. Then you can go to servers right here and create a new server, a documentation, in-app docs, and then other Discord credits, and then contribute. And then you can go up here to the top right and support a logs, activity logs, and then you can log out. So that's a little bit about Crafty's UI. So now I'm going to create a server in Crafty. So you can go over to servers right here, create new server. And then you can create a new server, import an existing one, and then import from zip file and upload a zip file uh, for server import. And then you can go over to be a bedrock create a new server, import an existing one, and then import a zip file and upload a zip file for server import. And then um, you can go over to Java uh, right now and then go to server type, uh, Minecraft servers, Minecraft proxies. I'm going to go to ser uh, servers. And then you can select the server type. So vanilla, paper, fabric, folio, forge installer, and then purper. I'm going to go pa paper. And then you can select a version and then you can set up a server name. So I'm going to just say testing server. And then you can put a, mem a minimum memory and a maximum memory in the server port. You can build the server, reset form. I'm going to build the server. So this can take a little bit because it's got to uh, import the executable. So now it's imported. So you can press start. And then you must agree to Minecraft's EULA. So I'm going to say yes. And then you can see it's online now. So you can go into the server and you can go to logs. And now you can watch it start up. So this can take a little bit. So now it's all done. So now I'm going to go over the server's uh, uh, details. So the server status started up time of the time zone, the CPU, memory usage, players, version, description, server type, and then the terminal, the logs, 
in the end you can filter in the end a uh, schedule so you can schedule a task so name a crone or reaction the action start server restart shut down server backup server and custom command and then the interval a uh, 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 days hours minutes and then the time uh, enabled a uh, delete after execution save and then cancel um backup so, so so you can back up by by clicking the backup now and then a uh, compressed backup shut down server for duration of backup a run command before backup and run command after backup you can click here for exclusions and exclude files from the backup and then save and cancel and, and now you can see all the files and you can go into them um so a default vm emacs and subline for the key bindings and then toggle editor size and then save so you can see the config over here of the server and then the server config area you can update executable and delete server once it's stopped and then player management so players and band players and then now metrics so cpu and then um a memory and then down here is players when you have some um, so you can click one day, two days, and three days for metric a period, and then a webhooks. So you can click a, a new webhook, and then a Discord, minor most, Slack, and Teams. So it's your web, a webhook, and then a bot name and trigger, and then you can press save or cancel. So that's a little bit about the server options. So I just went step by step on getting crafty running on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.